two million cats are going to die. At least if the Australian government gets his way. Because they plan on airdropping poisonous sausages out of an airplane to eradicate two million cats. What have cats done to deserve such a cruel fate? Find out today on Biodiversity News. This is Bart Coppens and welcome to Biodiversity News. So the Australian government wants to kill 2 million cats and in the media this has been somewhat of an outrage. What if I told you that cats really aren't as innocent as they look? Killing 2 million cats by poisoning them? What have cats done to deserve this? Our beloved pets? Well there's, there's one tiny, tiny thing. Cats are directly or indirectly responsible for the extinction of 87 bird species, 45 mammal species, 10 reptile species. Cats are also responsible for being the biggest cause of death of birds in urban areas almost everywhere across the globe, driving already threatened species to the brink of extinction from reptiles to mammals to birds to amphibians and now cats are killing dolphins and seals it's true they are it's been estimated that in the United States alone there are 84 million individuals of uh, domestic cats and in the UK this is about 10 million here's the thing cats are not native species to many of these parts of the world where they have been introduced. And in places like Australia, they are wreaking havoc on wildlife. You see, cats are predators, introduced predators. Cats are a massive, massive problem for many threatened and rare species. Cats are an apocalyptical disaster for wildlife and cats are responsible for driving rare species to extinction. Here I have some science, some scientific publications. A few that I picked that would be interesting and thought provoking. And I hope you will listen to me while I read them to you. Let's start with the first one. In 1987, Peter Churcher and John Lawton asked the owners of cats in Bedfordshire, England, village, to keep any gifts that were brought to them by their cats. Owners of 78 house cats participated in this study, which is all but one cat owner in the village. And the researchers were extrapolating these findings to estimate that the 5 million house cats that were in the UK at the time were responsible for killing approximately 80, no, 70 million animals each year. 20 million of which are birds. Now, in this study, there were 5 million house cats in the UK. Today it's 10 million. Do the math, please. Second study. A four-year-long study in rural Wisconsin by Coleman and Temple confirmed the UK findings. 30 cats radio-colored for various periods of time led researchers to conclude that in Wisconsin alone, cats may kill 19 million songbirds and some 130,000 game birds in a single year. The researchers focused on rural areas where residents 
averaged more than four cats apiece. Working out to a density of 75 cats per square mile. Temple, a professor at wildlife at ecology at the University of Wisconsin, also stated that house cats are probably the principal predator of birds and small mammals in many areas in rural America. Using figures from Wisconsin and Illinois, he found that outdoor cats kill 47 million rabbits a year, more than human hunters do with guns. Temple points out that cats may also be a chief threat to some bird populations, especially grassland birds, many of which are already in decline due to habitat loss. Are you having fun yet? I am. Another study. This is science. In Virginia, Dr. Joseph Mitchell, an ecologist at the University of Richmond, and his colleague, Dr. Ruth Beck, conducted a study using their own cats. During the 11 months of their test, their five cats killed at least 187 animals, of which were most, mostly small mammals. Of special interest to the researchers was the impact on songbirds, which are in decline in the state. They conservatively, conservatively estimate that domestic cats kill at least 26 birds each year in uh, urban areas, or 83 birds in rural areas representing over 26 million birds in Virginia alone. Mitchell says the figures may be conservative because the study only uh, confirmed counted kills, not cases in which the cats ate their victims or left the bodies hidden. Number four, worldwide. Ah, that's going to be interesting. This is a worldwide study. So this could be interesting for all of you viewers. Worldwide, cats may have been involved in the extinction of more bird species than any other cause except habitat destruction. Cats are contributing to the endangerment of populations of birds, such as burrowing owls, leased terns, piping plovers and loggerhead shrikes. In Florida, marsh rabbits in Key West have been threatened by predation from domestic cats. Cats introduced by people living on the barrier islands of Florida coast have depleted several unique species of mice and wood rats to near extinction. This is very concerning. What this means is that next, okay, next to ha the dest complete destruction of your habitat, something that humans tend to do, Cats are the second most biggest cause to the extinction of many bird species. But we are not finished, friend. Five, many humane societies and rehabilitation centers doing education quote the following for a countrywide estimate of the impact of owned cats on birds. Richard Stalkup of the Point Reyes Bird Observatory, oof, that's difficult to pronounce with my accent, Point Reyes Bird Observatory, he estimated that of the 55 million domestic cats in the US, excluding Hawaii and Alaska, some 10% may never go outside, and another 10% are too old or too slow to catch anything. Of the remaining 44 million cats, a conservative estimate is that 1 in 10 cats kills a bird a day. This would yield a daily toll of 4.4 million birds, or 1.6 billion cat-killed cat birds in the US each year. 1.5 billion birds per year. Research has shown that rural cats 
with more wildlife contact kill many more with the result that the feral cat population, most of which is rural, has an even more significant impact on the bird population. Alley Cat Allies estimates that there are 60 million feral cats in the United States. Combining feral and domestic cat predation, it's estimated that more than 3 billion birds are killed every year. 3 billion birds in the United States every year. Number 6. Cat predation can also negatively impact our native predators, including raptors such as hawks, falcons and owls. A study in Illinois, how do you pronounce Illinois? I've never known, is it like, it sounds French, like Illinois, 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 I don't know. You tell me in the comments, please. Concluded that cats were taking 5.5 million rodents and other vertebrates from a 26,000 square mile area, effectively depleting the prey base necessary to sustain wintering raptors and other native predators. So what this means is that cats don't only directly threaten birds by slaughtering them on a massive scale, but also by slaughtering an other animals in sufficient amounts that predators that rely on them cannot sustain themselves. Especially in winter when food is scarce, many raptors, like birds of prey, rely on mice and other small rodents to survive and get by. This is going to be difficult if cats are wiping out their food. Seven. And this is the last one because I want some discussion in this video as well. This is just the part where we present some facts and after we will discuss them. Domestic cats have passed diseases such as feline leukemia, distemper and an immune deficiency disease to wild populations of felines including the endangered Florida panther. So cats are not just killing animals on large scales, they're also introducing their diseases to, you know, felines like panthers or cats, but there's also other ways that they can do this. Was this all? Nope. Turns out cats are also killing dolphins and seals. Now how you ask? Well, not many people know that cats, they carry a very specific parasite with them called the toxoplasma. And well, I'm not 100% familiar, but I think it's a unicellular parasite. I'm not sure if it's a bacteria or like a, a nematode or whatever it is, a plasmodium. Um, but I know it is a parasite that lives in cats called toxoplasma. And what this parasite does is it infects um, the prey of cats, such as small mice, etc. And it makes them go crazy. Now, this is what the disease wants to do, because uh, the toxoplasma, to complete its life cycle, it needs to go from the cat to a small rodent and then back to its host. To It completes its life cycle in two different animals. So. The toxoplasma, it wants the prey to be eaten by the cat, so it can reinfect itself and complete its life cycle. So, um, but not many people know that toxoplasma can also spread to other animals that are not just cats and their prey. Now, the natural life cycle of this parasite is only between cats and their prey, such as rats and rodents. But it can also survive in other animals with ill effects. Um, in fact, humans are commonly infected with this parasite, even, especially if they keep a lot of cats. But in humans it's been relatively harmless. There's not many cases where toxoplasma has really harmed human beings. So this tends to be knowledge that is below the surface. Although in some very rare cases, people with very weak immune systems can be uh, overcome by the parasite. 
Uh, sometimes it also affects babies that are in the womb of the mother, um, terminating the pregnancy or negatively imp impacting the health of a human fetus of pregnant women. But generally in humans, it's a somewhat harmless parasite. But we forgot to consider something. Each animal is different, has different immune system. And some animals don't have immune system that cope with the parasite very well. This is especially true for um, animals that live in countries where cats are not native. So, and the toxoplasma doesn't exist originally. So, they are not adapted to deal with these sort of diseases. And these animals may die from infections of the toxoplasma. And new research has pointed out that um, a few, few dolphins recently that were found dead were dissected and autopsied. And the research has revealed that these dolphins died from cat parasites. Now, how the hell is this possible? Well, it turns out the parasite can survive very well in water. Uh, now, like I said, I haven't read up on the biology of this parasite very well, but um, I think it produces at some point in its life cycle like these egg capsules, uh, like oocytes or something. Now, this is, take it with a grain of salt, but it turns out the parasite survives well in waterways. And here it can affect other animals like, uh, like fish, but also octopi, just the small stuff that lives in the water. And it's washed, it's flushed from the waterways into the ocean. And eventually dolphins and seals will consume these small animals and bioaccumulate these parasites on a large scale to the point where they can die. Now recent studies have also found that even seals are dying from the cat parasite and only a very few cases have been confirmed but the thing is there is almost nobody out there who is researching this so there's when a dolphin dies what's the chance that a scientist will just dissect it and look at its immune system to check if it's infected with a cat parasite that almost never happens so the fact that it has been done and it has been confirmed means that out of these very f uh, rare few cases you can extrapolate this and it means it probably happens more commonly than we think. To make it short, there's probably already hundreds of large marine mammals such as dolphins and whales that have died because of cats outdoors infecting everything, spreading their diseases. Very concerning. And suddenly it becomes somewhat more understandable why the Australian government is taking such drastic measures. And now we are going to discuss Australia for a little bit. Because we have established that cats are a worldwide problem, driving many rare animals extinct and decimating our wildlife. But in Australia this problem is ten times worse. Because Australia is a very fragile island ecosystem. And while um, Europe and America, to some extent, have animals that are able to cope with predation of animals such as cats, in Australia there are many, many uh, animals that don't know to deal with predators at all because they are absent on the island. I'm not saying that Australia has no predators but that the animals that live there don't know how to defend themselves against cats. That's a different thing. Cats are an invasive species in Australia and they arrived with European settlers around 1700. But feral colonies of cats were established by the eight, uh, 1850s because it turns out that some cats can reproduce in the wild without being taken care of by humans. So that means there's also a lot of feral cats in Australia that are not being looked after by humans. Since then, 34 mammal species that lived in Australia have vanished. So out of the 34 species of mammals that went extinct in Australia, cats are indirectly or directly responsible for, well, at least contributing to 22 extinctions. That's the majority. Cats are still a problem. 
Cats are currently identified to be a direct threat to 35 species of birds, 36 mammal species, 7 reptile species, and 3 species of amphibians even. Now, if you're sensitive, you may skip the video for a bit because I'm going to show you some images that some users may find gruesome. There are feral cats being dissected by uh, Australian wildlife officials, uh, showing the gut contents of these cats, revealing the extent of many native birds and animals that were found in their stomach remains. Okay, so very briefly, not to shock you, but let, let's just take a look. Okay, this is facts. This is what's happening. Pretty bad, right? Most of them are endangered or threatened reptiles or birds. And to me it's starting to make sense why the government would want to get rid of these feral cats. Hey, here I got a nice fact sheet for you. Researchers determined that in 2018 that feral cats in Australia kill an estimated 1 million reptiles in an average single day. 1 million reptiles per day. Tallies of unusual death tolls racked up by Australia's feral cats are staggering. About 360 million birds and 569, that's almost 600 million reptiles, according to the Australian Wildlife Conservancy. 600 million reptiles? Between 2 million and 6.3 million cats roam Australia and they can be found on nearly 100% of the continent, including 80% of its islands. When the latest feral cat call was announced in 2017, Australia Threatened Species Commissioner Gregory Andrews named cats the single biggest threat to our native animals, declaring that the call was necessary to safeguard the future of vulnerable wildlife. Approximately the 2011,000 cats were killed in Australia in 2016 and the current cull will take place through 2020 with the goal of eradicating 2 million cats through poison bait, shooting and trapping, the Herald reported. So to sum it up, <clears throat> the Australian government plans to poison, shoot and trap 2 million cats. Now I know that there will be some animal lovers that are watching today that are getting sick to their stomach by the idea of 2 million cats being killed. And I understand. And there's also a lot of counter arguments to be made. So um, today we are going to discuss some of the solutions and counter arguments, just so people can have some clear thinking about this issue. Because we just stated the facts. Now we're getting to some discussion. So here are some of the counter arguments that um, <clears throat> the pro-cat cat people are commonly making. The number one that I hear the most often is this. We should leave these cats alone because it's nature. It's the cycle of life. Animals kill and hunt each other and there's nothing we can do about that. This is the weakest argument so I was the first argument that I wanted to debunk. Uh, in fact it's not really an argument. The fact that something is natural doesn't mean that it's okay. Hey, you want to know what's nature? Well, some of you, some of some people tend to think when they hear the word nature, they think of flowers and bees and cute kittens and uh, pandas. The truth is, nature is also child uh, still death. The first argument that I wanted to debunk. It's also the weakest one, but the one I hear the most commonly on social media, things like Facebook. And that's this. We should leave cats alone, because predation by cats is natural. Animals kill each other, and cats killing mice and birds is nature. It's the cycle of life, and we cannot interfere with nature. But this is a very weak argument. It's not even an argument, it's just semantics. And let me tell you why. Some people tend to think that nature, nature is flowers, nature is bees and honey, nature is pandas and foxes and nice things. Let me also tell you what's nature. Cyanide is natural. Cancer is nature. In fact, 
cancer is one of the most natural and organic things I can think of. Um, so is stillbirth, miscarriages, babies dying soon after they are born. It's very natural. In fact, young infants have uh, a high mortality rate. But that doesn't mean these things are okay, does it? Second of all, what is nature? It's quite subjective, isn't it? I mean, I can stretch the definition of nature a lot and I can still be right. In fact, if you look at it this way, human society is natural. We are a biological species, the Homo sapiens, a species of mammal. And everything we build from our cities to our infrastructure, to our industries and jobs are natural if you one, one, want to use this definition. And by this logic, pollution is also natural. I mean, it doesn't mean it's okay, right? It doesn't mean anything. That something being nature, it, abs it means absolutely nothing. You're def you, can, you can apply this definition to everything, really. I mean, humanity, humanity is also natural. War is natural. Uh, what does it mean? It's complete nonsense. Now, let me tell you something. What you probably mean is that cats are a natural part of ecosystems, but that's absolutely wrong. Cats are introduced by humans. They are not part of the ecosystem. Second of all, they are often fed by humans. And they don't, really, they don't even have to survive in the wild. They're not contributing anything. They're just taking away. Because cats, the thing is, they're, they're basically just predators. Um, predators on welfare, if you think about it. You see, at least predator, even other invasive animals out there, at least when they live in the wild, they have to sustain themselves, they have to feed themselves, they are subject to uh, limited resources, they have to compete for food, they have to survive, uh, find a mate, they have to keep warm in winter, maybe they have to overwinter, even if it's an animal that's not part of a native ecosystem, but cats don't even have this problem. They have shelter, they have unlimited food, uh, humans breed them, so the number is artificially inflated. There are more cats than a natural ecosystem could ever support, actually. Second of all, cats don't really belong in the majority of the world. Um, especially a domestic house cat. It's been introduced to places like uh, Australia, America, Europe, etc. Of course, we have the wild equivalent. I mean, in Europe, you have the European uh, wild cat. But that's a different story. These are not, are not predators on welfare. So, uh, yeah, it's a really strange, strange argument to say that something is nature, so we should let it be. What the hell is natural about, about pets slaughtering wildlife? There's nothing natural about it, in my opinion. It's a completely fully domesticated animal uh, that relies on humans to feed them and support them. And otherwise they couldn't even survive on their own, probably. So... What the hell is natural? The fact that it's an animal doing it doesn't automatically make it natural now, does it? I mean, yeah, there's nothing to be said here. It's not an argument. Let's, let's go to some more serious discussion. A better argument that I've heard is that um, <coughs> it isn't necessary to kill cats because, well, it's kind of cruel. And uh, let's be honest, nobody likes to see a cat being shot to death or poisoned. Well, maybe there's some sick people out there that do. And in fact, I don't enjoy the idea either, okay? So I get that people are very reluctant and trying to find solutions. And let me tell you, if there was a humane solution to uh, killing, to outright killing them, I would support it. But truth is, there is not. Now, some people here are in favor, for example, of for, um, something called nurture and release. What happens is these cats are captured. Uh, they are being castrated and released back into the wild. Now, what happens is... The theory behind this is these cats are not unable to reproduce, they cannot make babies. So eventually you'll see the population decline and the feral cat problem will be solved. Well, there's just one problem. Cats can live for a good 10 years. So when you are castrating an animal that uh, is out there killing wildlife and you release it back, even though it's unable to make any offspring, it's still going to be out there for 10 years, killing thousands of animals. And 
you're not going to see any result if you do this maybe in, in like a decade that's the, but that's the thing we want result now we don't want result in 10 years when these feral cats die of old age second of all new cats are also being released all the time third of all you cannot neuter literally every cat especially if there's millions of cats in, a, in like feral cats in the forest good luck capturing all of them and the ones that are not castrated with their birth rates will compensate for the ones that are castrated and if you stop doing this eventually the population will recover and go back up again so that's releasing them in the first place is absolutely not a solution because you're just letting this creature out there to kill it's not a good idea and if you were to keep them alive it would be a better alternative to put them like in a shelter now, second of all some people may ask so why don't you put these animals in a shelter in a wildlife uh, I don't know, in a, in a pet shelter where they can be adopted or rehabilitated, you know. Okay, that idea is fine. But the cold truth is there aren't enough resources to do this with 2 million cats or more. In fact, uh, United States, Europe, there are like 84 million of cats in the United States, 10 million in the UK. I don't know how many there are in Europe. But there's going to be need for shelters to support millions of cats. Now, in theory, this is this is a good solution in theory, if you had the resources. I mean, if you had the money to to adopt and feed millions of cats, fine. You don't, then you don't have to kill them, and you don't have to commit any sort of cruelty. But the truth is, we don't have this. It would be extremely expensive and uh, not very cost effective. Second of all, it's also very hard to just trap cats. Uh, usually just, you know, targeting them on a large scale is easier, but Okay, there's some truth to this argument Because it's a good idea on paper, just not realistically possible in real life Until, until maybe some sort of millionaire steps up and decides to uh, Donate his life savings, maybe Bill Gates Maybe he's secretly a big cat lover and when he dies he says, okay I will give my billions away and uh, build shelters all across the globe to capture feral cats, but uh, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling here, but uh, nah, next argument. Now some people have said, why would you throw toxic uh, bait from an airplane that's going to kill the cats that eat it in Australia? Uh, because it's also going to kill a lot of wildlife. Because other animals may eat this, eat this bait and they may get poisoned and die as well. Very good argument. But scientists have already thought about this. And I got the facts right here. So this is about the poison, the uh, poison sausages and bait that Australian government will drop from airplanes in 2020. The poison payloads are packed with kangaroo meat and seasoned with spices and chicken fat. And they also contain one deadly ingredient a poisonous chemical called sodium fluoracetate, which occurs naturally in Australian plants in the Gastrolobium genus. This compound is lethal to cats and other non-native carnivores, but will not harm ingenious Australian species that have evolved resistance to the toxin. Aha! This is extremely smart if you ask me. Because you see, Australia has a lot of toxic, dangerous plants. Take the Gimpy Gimpy for example, a type of urticating nettle that's so extremely painful if you touch it. You will hurt for years and they will have to strap you to a hospital bed for you to stop screaming out of pain. Strangely, native animals, they can touch the plant and not be affected. Well, if something like a horse would touch the nettle, it would probably die. And that's because many native animals to Australia have adopted resistances to these, to these plants and dangerous wildlife that are trying to defend themselves. But invasive species don't have this resistance because they never co-evolved with these plants and never had to uh, basically compete with them. And this is very interesting. So it means that literally this toxin in Australia it will only only kill it will only kill cats. So if an uh, animal native to Australia 
will consume the toxic bait, he will be fine. Really? So the argument that it may kill other wildlife is not true. Now here I have some more. Sodium fluoroacetate is an odorless, tasteless white powder that prevents cells from processing energy, leading to unconsciousness and death. Another type of bait sausage is being dropped in Australia. Contains a pellet of the toxic compound paraaminopropiophenone, which cats will swallow whole, but smaller mammals will avoid. While cat lovers may be troubled at the prospect of felines being deliberately poisoned, Australia's out of control feral cat population has decimated the contents wildlife for many decades. There you go, folks. Now, last but not least, I want to put one disclaimer here. If you are a cat lover watching this and you have an outdoor cat, I'm not, I'm not telling you how to live. I'm not telling you to change your lifestyle for me. I'm not pointing the finger at you. What you're doing is bad, you bad, bad, you're letting your cat outside. But I'm just presenting here the facts because some cat owners may not be aware of this problem. Now, if you are uninformed, you are able to make a choice on this subject. But from now on, you are informed. So when you are now a cat owner, you may think, hey, maybe my cat is negatively impacting the ecosystem. And I will make the choice to keep him inside. And other people will say, well, at least I've been informed, but the uh, negative things out outweigh my enjoyment, my experience, and I still want to keep my cat out uh, outdoors. And at least when, when you now decide to let your cat outside, at least you know what you are doing, at least you are informed. So, but I would like to say that I would strongly recommend all cat owners to, to keep their cats inside, because I've just told you all the extreme damage that cats are doing worldwide. They are driving species extinct, uh, from mammals to reptiles to birds to even dolphins, seals, whatever. It's a huge, huge... Cats are one of the major problems we are having right now in relation to wildlife. So um, I'm not telling you to change your lifestyle, but I'm just telling you to consider what, what you are doing and what the impacts of this are, okay? Not all of us are free of sin. I eat meat, I, I travel a lot by airplane, we, some of us negatively impact wildlife in some ways and some of us positively impact it in other ways, but um, it's basically just a consideration for you to make. But the truth is, especially, the truth is that cats, they don't belong in nature, not in threatened or rare ecosystems. And to be honest, in my opinion, especially if we are talking about protected areas or forests, cats should be eradicated and shot. And that's because there are little to alternatives to this. And the benefits far outweigh the, uh, the negatives, in my opinion. It's the time that humanity will step up its game and start doing shit like this. And what's really astonishing to me is the fact that this is controversial. For some reason, um, people who are poaching animals, like they're shooting, they're, they're shooting rare or endangered birds, they will get a lot of criticism and flack, and rightfully so. And so will people who pollute the environment. But if it's, if it's your pet killing wildlife, then for some reason nobody cares. Uh, why is this? Why do we eradicate harmful pests? But why do we let getting cats get away with the massive destruction that's happening on a large scale? And the answer to this is simple. Cats are cute. That's the only thing. That's, that's, the, main, that's the main reason why people are objecting. It's okay what, whatever you do, as long as you are cute or good looking. Doesn't matter if they're wiping out species worldwide. Cats are cute. We like them, so it's okay, you know? We like to eradicate other pests, or, but cats, no. It's basically, yeah, it's kind of a double standard to me. But hey, here's the thing. 
50 years ago, smoking in the train, in the airplane, in a restaurant was normal. And nobody is doing it anymore. It takes time to adapt to new things and insights. And just since recently we are discovering the terrible impact that cats are making worldwide. And I think that maybe over the course of time, people will adapt to this and choose to keep their cat indoors. You see, indoor cats are not a problem. Responsible cat owners are not a problem. This is about feral cats who are, maybe they don't even have owners, or just people who own, who own cats and let them outside all day. And I believe that this is just like smoking. It's a bad habit and over time it needs to stop. And I think over a long time adjustments will be made to prevent this. For now we are just in the beginning, the first stages of research, etc, etc. But um, thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you next time, man. And for you cat lovers out there, chill out. This is not a personal attack on you or your lifestyle. But it is a challenge because I really want to make you think. Because there's even I, uh, how much as, I, as much as I like my audience and my viewers, I cannot deny the fact that, you know, this is making, this is a serious problem. And I would like it, for, I, like what for, I would like for everyone to stop doing it, at least in some, to some degree. Or even a reduction would be good because we can't, we can't sustain it like this. And I'm also impressed by the Australian government for having the balls to do this. They are really serious about wildlife conservation and so should we be. Um, although it has already caused a big uproar, people are discussing it and screaming bloody murder. Because uh, we want we want to touch our precious cats, right? Even though it's completely hypocritical to be an animal lover and defend cats killing wildlife. Or claiming that you somehow have the best interest of animals in mind. It's completely ridiculous. All biologists and sci scientists will, will disagree with you. And that's basically very telling of the, of the psychology of the animal lover. They are people who operate on gut feelings. They will like something, they will defend cats even if they are making a, a scientifically, uh, it has been scientifically proven. So there's really no arguing about this. The statistics are here for everyone to read. They are making negative impact on wildlife. So, um, so there's, the fact that people out there are still defending the fact that the, and just just trying to reason with us trying to tell us we should leave feral cats alone why because they are cute and to me that's unthinkable and hypocritical you know um i would say that one of the most harmful groups of people in the world are people who identify as animal lovers but haven't seriously read a book about biology or nature any day in their lives but still they are here to, give, to spout their opinions, to force feed us and tell us, to, to tell biologists and conserve, uh, you know, people who work in, in conservation, to tell them what to do. And Australia has a really big problem with invasive species. Take the cane toad, for example, or simply rabbits that don't belong in Australia. Um, they, they change the whole, they dominate the whole landscape, the whole ecosystem. It needs to stop. Sometimes you just need to have the balls to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Yeah, sorry. I got tired of that whole suit thing. But there was one thing that I uh, wanted to add to my video. Operation Pussy Lockdown seems to be a Facebook page that's very keen on planting awareness <coughs> against the negative effects that cats are having uh, on our precious wildlife. I gotta say, sometimes they're a little bit uh, blunt about it and good at uh, stirring up controversy. I like to be a little bit more subtle in my approach, but that's also because I'm a YouTuber and uh, I'm here with my face and identity. Already took me a lot of balls to make this video, because I know it could upset some people, but uh, gotta have the truth out there. 
yeah shout out to you guys keep trolling well at least the thing is your blunt approach is at least generating a lot of controversy and discussion so i guess it's a good thing for awareness although uh, i like to be more tactful than that anyway thanks for watching if you want to support me and my content and uh, i actually i have an uh, a fancy outro where i tell you this bye bye oh and before we finish one thank you to the people who have subscribed to my crowdfunding platform patreon because you see you guys have voted for this episode on patreon you can vote what the next episode going to talk about so if you're curious and you want to influence the things i'm going to say on youtube consider subscribing and well maybe your vote will make the difference and uh, see you next episode So you're still watching after all this time? Wow, I would like to say thank you for watching Biodiversity News. Biodiversity News is my new mini-series on YouTube where I comment on news, updates and research regarding biology and biodiversity all across the globe. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and consider joining my crowdfunding platform Patreon. Why? For much of my YouTube channel is completely demonetized and I rely on 100% crowdfunding to get this channel going. If you are a subscriber of my Patreon, you are also able to vote on the next subject of this episode.